Oh, good. That they're part of the program. Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. I am proud and honored to have as my guest today, Hawaii State Senator Lorraine Inouye. Senator Inouye currently represents Hawaii's fourth district on Hawaii Island. She's an experienced legislator who formerly served in the Hawaii State Senate for 10 years, from 1998 to 2008. Additionally, Senator Inouye was Hawaii County Mayor from 1990 to 1992, and was elected to the Hawaii County Council from 1984 to 1990. For the current 2017 legislative session, Senator Inouye is the chair of the Senate Transportation and Energy Committee and is a member of both the Water and Land and Ways and Means Committee. Please join me in welcoming Senator Inouye to the show. Thank you for joining us. Aloha, Carl. My pleasure. Please tell us more about your district. Okay, well, before that, let me share something else oh, with please. that's missing uh, there. Uh, my political life started off uh, as I volunteered to serve on the Hawaii County Planning Commission in the 70s. Oh, so from okay. 74 to 1979, uh, and I served as the chairperson uh, during the last year. And so having the experience serving on the Hawaii County Planning Commission was my first experience. However, I do want to say that during that time, our commission is the one that had set the, uh, the environment for Hawaii, whether it's for jobs, um, new industries, and let me say what we did was we did the rezoning for the entire uh, North, Co uh, North um, Hawaii where the hotels are. Okay. When Governor Burns uh, had built the Queen Ka'ahumanu Highway mm -hmm. to connect and uh, between uh, the West Hawaii and East Hawaii side and from Waimea, uh, Kauai High to Kona, um, there really was no connection. So he had the foresight, built the highway, and we had nothing there. Wow. And our commission uh, took hold and the opportunity for the developer, Waikoloa Land Industries, to rezone the entire region. And today, don't we have the diamond in the, in the rough? Absolutely. We have beautiful hotels, we have jobs there available for our people, um, and uh, we have the opportunity to receive all our visitors that come to stay in, on the Big Island. Exactly, with two, two airports. Two airports, yes. Two the airports. University of Hawaii the and University Hilo, Hawaii. yes. And so much opportunity. And because uh, exactly. I, I myself have worked, um, I, there are some projects that I've worked on um, on the Kona side. And there's so much opportunity to build and grow businesses, industrial businesses, as well as uh, potential manufacturing My opportunities. My message when I was mayor um, to the people of Hawaii throughout the state that Hawaii Island is the future for the state in terms of growth, uh, population. Um, we're too crowded here on Oahu. Absolutely, I, we are. I, yes, I have a condo here. I love it. I have a place to stay to do my people's work mm -hmm. while I'm here at the legislature. However, uh, we have room to grow. Yes. I've always said that. So there's opportunities for all sorts, Absolutely. including astronomy in my district. Uh, you which, did ask that's me. That's a big issue. Yes, yes, that's a big issue. Me, so we'll okay, get to that. <laughs> well, where, what's your district for? Yes. Okay. We had the opportunity to add one more Senate seat because the Hawaii Island, before the last reapportionment, mm -hmm. we had three. And because of the last reapportionment, we found that the census had, um, the census told us that Hawaii Island increased by 25%. Ooh. And so Oahu lost one Senate position. And because of the increasing population, okay. so we were, we got. The, so you lost a Senate seat, yeah. and we gained a and you Senate gained seat. One. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Exactly, that makes a lot exactly. of sense because because I what I saw happen was, um, I'm currently living in Senate District 14, but in 2010 I was Senate District 13, and that change happened exactly. as a result of all of that. Yes, so with the redistricting, yeah. and so I used to be the senator for East Hawaii for Senate District One. However, I was I was absent from you know I left in 2008 to run for mayor. Of course, I didn't win. Uh, I lost to 
to to Mr. Kinoy at, at that time. However, having said that, but my constituents wanted me back, and so I decided I'm going to run again in 2014. And so having said that, with a new district and a new Senate seat, um, my district runs, if you know how the map is, you have Hilo here mm -hmm. and Kona. Right. Okay, so it's right. They're, they're seeing it opposite, but that, yeah. yes. Okay, all right. Kona, <laughs> yeah, Hilo and Kona. Right. So my district is only five miles out of Hilo. So uh, where the surf spot is Honolii, and we go down to the map where Mauna Kea mm -hmm. uh, Mountain is, and Saddle Road going into Kona, right. and all of that north mm -hmm. is my district. There you go. So I travel 200 miles one way Ooh. in 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 the, my longest distance wow. i have the largest geographical district in the state however because of you know we're so large that our population is spread, is, out. Is spread out so right, 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 right. i do travel a lot to address my constituents so i have all the always, hamakua always coast i have north kohala waimea waikoloa and parts of kona my my family has a farm um up at kola beach park yeah. Ah, that's in so my district. That's in your district. Yes, yeah. yes. So yeah, we uh, they they have a macadamia nut grove, and they're, they're we can trying grow to grow up some all coffee. sorts of things on Hawaii yeah, Island. Everything. And the Hamakua Coast, where your family grows, it's rather interesting uh, because it has the best soil. So if you're in downtown Hilo and Wailuku River South, heading towards all of Hilo, going to Puna, yeah. and the uh, geography are more rocky. Yes. Wailuku River North, going through the Hamakua Coast into Waimea, North Kohala, are all uh, dirt. It's very rich. And so rich, rich yes. soil. So Yes, everything we put in the ground there grows, yes. and the amount of rain there. My is, son and daughter um, have a farm uh, in combination of seven acres. So they grow lychee and longan and uh, native uh, trees and native flora. That's great. Yes. That's great. Wow. Wow. Spectacular. So you are invested personally in your district and, and the people of, the, of, see, you are mayor of the entire island. So you have a lot of constituents who know you island wide. That's got to be, that's got to feel like an extraordinary responsibility. I would think. Uh, so that's one of the things that I always appreciate when we have a legislator, when we have a mayor or a governor who really understands how to give back. And you've made this comment before. It's all about what the people need. Exactly. Right? T tell me about where you come from with that, because I think that's wonderful. Yes. Well, you know, anything that we do in government, and I'm there to do the people's work whether it's for my island, my district, but the statewide you know, concerns uh, that we need to address as right. legislators. Um, so having said that, anything that we do in, in, in bills that you know, we introduce, um, we all have to recognize that you know, what we do must be in sequence that everybody enjoys. Though we do when we look at education as an example, we need a new school here, we need a new school there, where the population is, mm -hmm. and that's our job to, right. to have the outlook, you know, um, covering and and uh, creating, uh, making sure that that everybody in the state enjoys. So, having said that, being chair of transportation and energy is um, is exciting. I I enjoy the work. Uh, never before in the Senate has one person addressing the two committees. The two, wow. uh, but I guess maybe because of the experience sure. as, as, you know, former mayor and Absolutely. former council person Absolutely. that, you know, the experience helps. Absolutely. However, it, it's the issues. And then I enjoy transportation uh, because it oversees uh, my committee uh, as chair as well, works well with DOT and the three components that make up the department. So we have the highways, we have the airports, and we have the um, the uh, the harbors the harbors right. and having said that that's all part of Hawaii Island as well yeah, you know absolutely. we got two airports we have two harbors yeah. and uh, and you know the just enjoying our state you also have every 
possibility of renewable energy. Exactly, exactly. On, on your island. And that's, yes, yes. And that's an important thing to understand as well. Everyone wants to go to that island and, you know, the, the undersea cable. And I think, yes, Carl, you know, <laughs> and, you know, Having said that, with energy on our island, and I don't, I don't think people really know that, that our renewable goal, though, that we all had set, that by 2045 we need to reach 100%. 100%. However, our total um, renewable for the state, I don't think we even reached the 30% yet. However, Hawaii Island already has renewables up to 50 percent so we do have everything you know we have geothermal we yes. have wind we have solar we have hydro i mean yes we, absolutely yes absolutely. and so, you also have um, um speaking of hydro you have hydrogen plants exactly. that are being built up there as well uh, and and that's one of the ideas that's being looked at i, I believe through hcap uh, in order to provide alternative fuel options for our vehicles even Exactly. And of course, um, you know, then with how we move towards to where we want to, to go to, that bio biofuels is very, very uh, uh, important in yes. part of the conversation. Yes. And, and so that's and we what there's we're a trying. Bill, there's a bill out right now. Exactly. Senate Bill 237, your bill that you introduced. Exactly. I'm very happy to I should have helped with that bill. That, exactly. I'm doing everything I can to bring a lot of attention to that. So um, looking forward to more conversation on that. Uh, we're going to have to take a quick break in a minute, so I don't want to jump into a big topic. But um, I wanted to, again, thank you uh, for coming on the show. Um, I'm looking forward to our next segment. We're going to talk more about the, the legislation that you're working on right now, where you think some of the um, focus could or should be uh, going forward. So I'm looking very much forward to this next segment. Please join us. Uh, this is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Our guest is Senator Lorraine Inouye. See you in one minute. The room is called the Governor's Ceremonial Room. And th this is where he signs bills. This is where he presents proclamations. This is where um, students come to learn about the government and how things work here. And so this is really where a lot of things happen. So how things work. So a bill that starts somewhere else in the House, and then it goes to the Senate, and then it goes wherever, and then finally here. So, right. So, so, so let's just play it out. Let's say there's a bill one, two, three, HB one, two, three, and it gets passed by the House to the Senate. The Senate amends it, so it's now HB one, two, three, SD one. And then it goes back. Let's just say that's where it ends up in the governor's desk. Uh, but before it gets there, that bill has to go through a rigorous departmental review. So the attorney general's office has to look at it and make sure that it complies with all legal um, uh, issues. Issues. Then the department has to look at it to make sure that it complies with um, all of the uh, directives that the department is working on and that, that that's, there's no conflicts, right? So once it passes legal review, department review, then it comes to the governor's desk. And the governor then has to decide whether he's going to sign it, whether he's going to veto it, or whether he'll let it become law without his signature. How does it become law without his signature? If by the appointed date it is neither signed nor vetoed, it becomes law without his signature. Agreed. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna, and once again, welcome our guest, Senator Lorena Noe. Thank you again. So, okay, let's jump into some legislation. Uh, we were just having a really good conversation this last minute as well. We won't go into that, but I, my brain is still rolling on that one. Uh, but um, the legislation is currently being worked on. You mentioned uh, the biofuels bill, uh, that, and there's a resolution coming as well, and there's a number of things uh, from that side. There's also energy and storage bills that are being looked at. Mm -hmm. There are tax credits, and it's, so this all entailed, and that's just energy side. It c carries over a little bit into transportation side, how some of that really falls in. Mm -hmm. um, from the legislature's perspective, I'm going I'm to start with this question. From the legislature's perspective, we see the, the intense focus that has been put on trying to address our electricity bills, absolutely necessary and important. And when we're talking about 100% by 2045, we're talking about electricity. The, now, as we're beginning and where the biofuels fits in is how we're trying to address the other 70% of the barrel of oil that comes in. Mm -hmm. and. There are a lot of ways to address that. So from the legislature's perspective, 
how are we, what are some of the concerns that, that have been voiced with regards to addressing that other 70%? Well, let me say that, uh, and I can talk about my goal in mm -hmm. the Senate. Please. I can speak for the House, uh, but the direction that, that we're working through. Um, having said what, what you, um, you said, uh, takes us to um, a, a, a path from what has been transpired with reaching our goals on renewables, we, what we did last year, but I'm focusing this year on energy storage, energy okay. battery storage, uh, and and thanks for your with your help as well and biofuels. The, there are other bills that is before me, which I am kind of putting aside for next year because uh, we all need to understand that this session is a bi, bi, uh, biannual, biannual uh, yeah. on, on budget as well and programs. And so whatever bills we have this year, that if we don't hear it, it turns over, I mean, it's transferred to next, Transfer year. To next year. So it's not something that I will say we will not carry over it. Uh, that we'll, we won't do at all. Right. Um, so having said that, uh, my concentration this year, because of the decline that we have right now with, uh, um, with solar mm -hmm. and PVs, uh, however, going to the next stage, I believe, and the support and what we need to do for the industry, for those in, in the energy industry, for those that um, have um, already set the stage with PVs, um, we need to ensure that we don't um, overcrowd our grid supply. Right. So, uh, so I'm concentrating. On, and we have several bills, and several bills that will come over from the House as well. And I think we both agree that we need to at least address energy battery storage this year. Okay. And that's my goal. Okay, and, and so, so there's your bills include a couple of, of, of categories, including exactly. some tax credit or rebate. Or rebate. As well as... Um, uh, well, actually, I'll let you. <laughs> okay. okay. So there's please. there's another piece that's rather important because we all know that we do have our tax credits right. that we enjoy now, um, with regards to to solar, to wind, um, and everything under the sun mm -hmm. that uh, on the 35 percent. Right. Now the federal on the federal level, they've they've changed that, and so they have a ramping down. Right. Uh, to what six year periods? Over six year I had period. a bill last year, which uh, I have for this year as well. We need to start ramping down uh, and not taking too much uh, out of the, the the state coffers because tax credits come. You know, we're we're taking a lot out of our general fund, yes. and so be, because of the decline and because we need to address um, the energy energy storage systems as well as how we're going to then give credit to our energy storage. Right. Um, and so having said that, I hope that the money committees this year would understand what we're trying to do. So let's ramp it down right. and also make sure that we address how we're going to do the tax credits and or a rebate for energy storage. Agreed. And, and, I, and we need to do that. Agreed. It's an important thing to understand. The, the, when we first initiated the Clean Energy Initiative in 2009 and it began to roll, the industry got huge, and there were jobs everywhere. Exactly. And it was spectacular. Pricing for all of these systems, for all these PV systems, was high. That pricing has dropped so far, it has become more like a commodity compared to what it was when it began. And that was the intention behind the tax credits, was mm -hmm. let's provide this, let's create the opportunity exactly. to ramp it down, right? So now, now that the pricing for that is done, now, now the big price is still the battery. So now how do we shift the focus right. to storage capabilities? So now it makes sense, if you look at it from that perspective, the commodity part came down, now this part needs to need some support, so now let's shift some of that exactly. over, Exactly, right? and I think maybe I was a little uh, too premature last year because I don't think people understood what it was 
yeah. trying to do. Sure. Um, but so having said that, then visiting it this year and knowing that we need to keep the industry alive. Right. You know, because people it's lost jobs. jobs. Exactly. Right. So now a lot of we're jobs were lost. Yes. A lot of jobs yes. were lost. I, uh, a lot of companies that I've worked with, they would have 10 crews, which means probably 40 different people out there working. They went from 10 crews to two crews. Exactly. Jobs gone. Huge, huge problem that that, that your bill that is trying closed. to bring back and closed. Exactly. Some yes. of them have gotten smaller. Yes. Jo businesses have closed, which causes maintenance problems for a lot of these. Exactly. Maybe we can go into that. But, but when yeah. we look at the bills, um, it's not only addressing uh, energy uh, storage for residential. Mm -hmm. So it addresses you know the commercial, commercial. the utility right. uh, scale as well. Uh, with regards to biofuels, the bill I have is to uh, make sure that um, we give direction to DBED, that they do the study to right. see how we could um, facilitate and actually, um, to me, I'd like, I'd like to be that process in place now, yes. but we we can't. I mean, we should have a plan. There's a lot more. We have a to... lot more and, and more input from those that see, you know, biomass, biofuels, um, and see what's out there. Exactly. And so if we do the study, then at least we have a place let me offer something. Um, I am fortunate enough that this last summer and fall, I got to work on creating that, a part of that study, a piece of that study mm -hmm. uh, for, um, for Pacific Command for PACOM, uh, for the gift pack program. And that, that's, that's Green Initiative for Fuel Transition Program for the Pacific. And that was all about creating that supply chain model what we would need here in Hawaii to have Hawaii be a biofuels center. So that study has begun. Also, uh, HNEI mm -hmm. has spent, and, and Scott Turn and mm -hmm. Susan Crow has spent a lot of time developing huge portions of that that are necessary to better understand that path forward. And some of that studies exist right now in DBED. So being able to bring all of that together and, and, and build a program is, is what you're trying to. Exactly. Right. And so as we move to the next session next year, that study should be available for us yes. then telling us where we're going and how we should move and what resources we exactly. need. Exactly. And so we need the participants. You know, it's addressing um, uh, our energy needs because, you know, we are an island state. We're not connected to the mainland. That's right. And so even if we're part of the USA, um, we need to sustain ourselves. We need to be self-sustaining. Exactly. Yes, exactly. The number, for the, the number I have in my head is in 2015, the state spent $5.7 billion on imported oil. I think it went up in 2016. So that's a lot of money that leaves the state. Well, uh, having said that, so my next goal, hopefully next year, um, I know there's some bills looking at transportation because we know that transportation at least is part of, I think they're more like 80%, you know, of, of, um, of petroleum yeah. and so, looking at transportation systems, yeah. uh, what we're going to do. Yes. Uh, are we going to concentrate on um, electricity, EVs for transportation? But you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see options. We need every option. We need e every option. And I'm. Uh, my goal is first on the government side is to look at experimentals uh, with our state Department of Transportation and, and and the vehicles that they have statewide. Absolutely. So the the the, the state fleet. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I know that um, I got to participate in a couple of forums that included uh, the director Ford Fujigami. Yes. And he agrees completely. Yes. Um, and he's looking at a number of different ways yes. to to try to achieve that. Well, see, and then talking about um, charging stations is another topic this year. Yeah. So um, what's important though? Um, and I, I have reservations about the process, how we're going to proceed, because I know that um, what's before us as well is on EV, because it's a specialty. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have a choice whether they want to remain using gas. Right. Uh, we have opportunities to use, to buy EVs, uh, electric vehicles. Um, so who puts in the charging stations is where I have a stall. Is it government that does it or the industry? Is it a commercial thing or is, is it, it a commercial? Thing? Yes. And so I'm. Um, we need to 
kind of work along with ideas, mm -hmm. opportunities, but let's remember what government is there for, That's right. to take care of the health and safety of our people. So when he, you know, it's um, uh, the resources go in different directions. Um, we really have to rethink what we're doing, and we that's need what makes, that's what makes your job hard. <laughs> that's why we need participation mm -hmm. from the industry. Um, exactly. That you know, you 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 need to pay your fair share. That's right. The stakeholders need to be involved, and they exactly. understand. There's not just your benefit; exactly. it's the state benefit. It's the people benefit. Exactly. So, uh, so okay. To, so, so to summarize, for your agenda this session you're looking at uh, um, for energy for energy purposes you're looking at tax credits and perhaps readjusting some tax credits and focusing them on storage batteries as and well as rebates or as well as rebates yes. exactly exactly um, as well as biofuels and exactly. trying, so from a from an energy perspective and carrying over a bit into transportation that's what you're looking at and and how you're trying to move along this session yes now on the transportation side, though, we all know that my committee also needs to address our rail. So yes. we're working on that. And so um, we could have spent the whole uh, I'm, on that, I'm a big supporter <laughs> of making sure mm -hmm. that we complete the rail system. Yes, absolutely. I was here in 2005 as chair of the transportation committee that did the first pass to allow the city and county to raise the GE. And so I was there. And I'm back here again. And so I had the opportunity then to extend the rail three years ago again, the, tech, the excise tax. But we're here um, looking at how we're going to proceed if we're going to uh, take care and address the sunset of raising the GE. Um, for city and county uh, in perpetuity. And right. so that's a challenge we have before it's, it's us. A, it's but a big challenge. I would yes. love to help with that as well. I, uh, my, I've got construction background and I, I see what's going on and I would love to be you able to come help that. and help us. So please, uh, so thank you. I, unfortunately, we are already done. And we'll there's back another again. hour, please. Yes, yes uh, let me know. I'll when talk we're to done with the first ta uh, After, pass. Perfect, Before crossover, okay, what bills are alive? So April, let's come back in April, okay? okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Aloha. And thank you for joining us. Think Tech Hawaii's Mover Shakers and yes. Informers. Thank you to all of the staff and crew. We'll see you next week. Aloha.